What's going on, y'all? 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 It's Saved or Doggy. What's going on y'all, it's David or David, and today I want to go over what I think are the best free-to-play units in Kingdom of Heroes Tactics War. I have made a very helpful spreadsheet for anyone to refer back to should they choose, and I'll just kind of summarize the sheet and go over each of the units that I have on the sheet in-game. Now, when I say free-to-play, in this case, I'm talking about 3-star units and 4-star units that you can combine to make. The units on this list are ones that I believe have some viability somewhere in today's meta. This is definitely not a tier list of any sorts, but rather something for like newer or mid-level players to refer back to when they summon or want to combine units to see if they have some viability anywhere. Please take this list with a grain of salt just because you don't see a unit on here. Don't feed it immediately because you might see some value in it where I do not. The explanations on the sheet are all assuming that the skills for the characters are all maxed out. As the units that I consider free to play get updated and more get added, I will be updating the sheet ASAP. Just like with all of my other sheets, I will be leaving dev notes at the bottom, along with a changelog tab and various different methods to contact me. You can DM me on Discord, you can email me, you can drop me a comment directly on this YouTube video, or you can just ask me live when I'm streaming on Twitch. So here is actually a quick preview of the sheet before I actually go over to the in-game client and break down all of these units down for you. So here you can see that I have the star level of the unit, this is going to be the unit name, this is going to be their basic attack or their skill 1, their skill 2, their skill 3, their skill 4, which is sometimes either they don't have it or it's a leader skill, and then this is the most common way you can acquire the unit. Um, for most of the 4 stars except Charlotte, you can pretty much also summon them besides combining them. And then for most of the three stars, you either summon them or you just farm them from like the rift dungeons. So the rest of the video will be me covering the nature units on this sheet currently and kind of like dissecting their skills and why I think they're good. The fire and the water units will be split into another video or two. If you'd rather just look at the sheet instead of hearing me cover them in depth, then by all means go for it. The link's going to be down below in the description. But before you take off, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and hit that notification bell because a lot of hard work goes into these and I love and appreciate all of the support that you guys give me. Thank you all. All right, so first up, I actually have Faust. So Faust is a mage. Um, his skill one or his basic attack, once you skill it up all the way, it's gonna be a 70% chance to strip one buff from the target. It's only a single target, so it's not that great, but I like to think of it as every single turn he takes, if the enemy has a buff, he has a 70% chance to take the buff away and reduce all of his cooldowns by one turn. So like every time he takes a turn, he can reduce his cooldowns by one turn. His skill 2 is kind of like an AoE, it's like a pseudo AoE, it's going to hit the target and the one behind them. Um, every time he uses this, he recovers 25% of the damage inflicted as health back, and he blocks HP recovery from them. And if they don't have any active buffs, like if you strip them with other units or with his skill 1, you grant every single one on your team with continuous recovery for one turn. So this, he's kind of like a pseudo healer, like a support unit or a mage, like slash mage. Um, and then his last skill is also pretty supporty, but it's a pretty big nuke. It's going to be a huge AoE, so it can hit like their entire team potentially. Attacks enemies within a target area by blasting above the area's surface. This increases when they have more remaining HP, so like when they're higher HP it does more damage. And it has a 75% 75, 75 chance to stun them for two turns. If this was a one turn, it would still be good, but the fact that this is a 75% chance to stun them for two turns is huge because like not being able to do anything for two turns is super detrimental. And then his leader skill or his four skill is going to be just accuracy increase for like nature allies by 32%, but when you skill it up, it's going to come out to 44%, I believe. So yeah, Faust is definitely a good like nuker slash supportish unit i would definitely recommend using him for like some pvp stuff definitely good for pv pve though all right and next up i have lucifer so before i cover most of his skills i do want to go over his fourth skill his passive successful hits by lucifer inflict continuous damage on enemies hit for one turn so every single time he attacks them it should inflict a, con a continuous damage effect unless they resist it so his skill 1 is going to be, once you skill it up all the way, it's going to be successful hits have a 60% chance to reduce the speed of enemies hit for one turn. Um, it's going to hit the unit and the unit behind them, it's just a melee range, but it will hit two units potentially, and inflict dots on them. And then the second part of the skill, the skill's damage increases when the enemy has more active debuffs. So not just... You don't really need any other units to inflict debuffs because he actually does it a really nice job of inflicting debuffs with continuous damage by himself and like speed reduction and he has other debuffs down along the line. 
So his skill two is going to be successful hits have a 55% chance to stun the target. It actually goes all the way up to an 80% chance, I believe, when you skill everything up, and it kicks them back and stuns them. So like it's melee, but it'll kick a unit back. You can push them into like a corner or something, or like push a melee unit away from your team and have an 80% chance to stun them. And it goes on a three turn cooldown, so that's pretty good. And then his third skill, which is the final one that I'm covering for him, it brings down a curse on enemies within a target area. Successful hits are going to have a 70% chance to hit an AoE glancing rate on enemies for three turns. A three turn glancing rate, and it's only on a four turn cooldown. And look how large the AoE is. Also, not only glancing hit, it's also going to inflict, inflict continuous damage on all of the enemies hit, which is huge. So like he adds just a ton of debuffs on everybody. He's pretty good on like the stun runes um, and he also does super good damage with like his basic attack. I definitely use him more for like PVE stuff like tower, but he has like sort of a niche in PVP if you kind of build like a really good cleave team around him. All right, now third on my list is actually going to be Thea. Let's see, where is she? Thea is actually one of my favorite units in this game. I just really, really enjoy her kit. Um, so the first skill, it's going to be fires a lethal toxin at an enemy target and inflicts continuous damage on yourself for four turns. Yeah, so you put a dot that lasts for four turns on yourself. Now I know that sounds crazy, but her next skill, it's going to explain all of it. Attacks enemies more than one within a target area by spraying toxins. Additionally, transfers all of your debuffs to enemies hit. This skill's damage increases when you have more active debuffs. So she does super good damage with this, but the most important part is she not only transfers like the four turn dots, so like you can stack this up like three, I think three turns with your skill one, your basic attack, and then the fourth turn transfer like a ton of continuous damage to the enemies along with like whatever debuffs you have on you. So like attack speed down, attack break, defense break, mobility reduction, like all of that stuff you can transfer with this skill and it's pretty much 100% accuracy. They can only resist it with like a really low chance. Um, and it's only a one turn cooldown. So like potentially you could just basic attack, use this. Basic attack, use this. And like keep always transferring the debuffs on yourself or from yourself to them. And then to like summarize everything, her third skill, rec she recovers, excuse me, 5% of her max HP at the start of the turn. This just kind of counter like balances the dot damage that you take every turn from your skill one. Um, and then her leader skill is just going to be all of her nature allies get, when this is skilled up, plus 41% attack, which is really good if you're trying to do like Fafnir. Like she's just basically really good for Fafnir and like TOA stuff because she is super, she has like a ton of dots and the dots really do add up like when she stacks them. Something with like Ingwe, her and Ingwe can like do Fafnir like super fast, like sub two minutes, just the two of them. All right, now, so last up for the four star units in the nature category, I have Charlotte. She's only, you can only attain her from, or obtain her from combining. Um, I actually want to go over her fourth skill, the passive first, because it's probably the most important thing she has. Every successful hit by Charlotte has a 70% chance to block HP recovery of enemies for one turn. Now this counts for like, even if her abilities are AoE, they're all, every single target that she hits in the AoE is gonna have a chance to block HP recovery. And then another important part for this is at the end of the turn, she transfers one debuff on herself to the enemy with the lowest HP percent. This is pretty much a 100% chance since there's no like accuracy number here. So it's gonna be really hard for the enemies to resist it. And this even works with things like stun and sleep and all that because she's gonna transfer it even though she takes the turn, it's still going to transfer the buff if she still has it at the end of the turn. So now to her skill one, this is just like a pretty much just like a damage, like single target nuke skill um, because it the damage increases when the enemy has more active buffs or debuffs. So they're going to get a ton of debuffs from like your passive, but also you can put a team with like Lucifer or Thea or stuff like that just to stack debuffs and then do a bunch of single target nuke damage with her. Her skill two is actually really nice. So it's a 30% chance when you, or 30% action gauge reduction when you skill it up and it's an AOE or like kind of like an AOE, it hits two units, but 30% action gauge reduction is huge. And not only that, after you hit them, if the enemy gauge or enemy's action gauge is below 50%, you reduce their defense and speed for two turns. Two turns is a long time and it's only a two turn cooldown. So like you can use this attack, use your other attack, and then come back and use this again and just keep reducing their action gauge and speed and you'll probably end up lapping them in turns. Um, and then her third skill is another AoE. It's a little bigger than the other one. It just hits two more units on the sides. 
but each hit, once you skill it up, re removes two enemy buffs and it blocks buffs. Now, buff blocking is huge in this game because there's not very many units, probably like three or four maybe, that can actually block buffs really good. So definitely use her for like TOA, she's super important. Um, maybe some other PvE content, like she actually can be used in Fafnir um, if you really need if you already have like a Thea, but you don't have like an Angway or something or a Lucifer, definitely fuse her because she will be useful down the road. All right, so now moving on to our three star units. First up, I have Cherry. Now, at first glance, I kind of didn't like Cherry, but now that I've looked at her abilities and like played the game for a decent amount of time and considered like all, all of her abilities pretty much do something super important for like Tower of Arrogance or like sometimes even PvP stuff. So her first ability is going to be just successful crits inflict con continuous damage on the targets for one turn. Um, I don't know if you guys have done like hard tower or like just even normal tower, but continuous damage with like no real accuracy or resistance check is huge. That's why pe like, people even use the three star mutant elf. He's just like a fire guy with the, pretty much the same exact skill. Just having like almost a guaranteed continuous damage effect is really important. So, and it's only single target. Her second skill is actually AoE, it'll hit like three tiles in an arc, and successful crits reduce the speed of enemies hit for one turn, and you knock the enemies back. So you can like spread out like Freya teams or stuff like that, or like you can basically just like AoE nuke some mobs, and you'll reduce their speed, and since you're going to want to build crit for skill one, you're probably, like crit is also good for skill two. And then skill three, you're not going to need crit, but it's a three turn cooldown, successful hits have a 70% chance to reduce the defense of enemies hit. It lasts for two turns and it's only a three turn cooldown and look how big the AoE is. Like she'll hit some the unit two hexes away and everyone around them. This is like great for like PvP cleave comps or just like nuking things in the tower or in like Fafnir. So she's great for PvE and she, you can actually take her inside like a PvP like just nuke or cleave team. So, and she's only a three star unit. A lot of like four star units have worse kits than this. So I would definitely recommend building her if you, or like at least skilling her up for now and then saving her for later if you have a ton of her. All right, so my second three star is actually the other part of the Lolly twins and it's gonna be Flora. So just like her sister, they look, I mean, look at them. They look so much alike. Um, Flora is gonna have a skill three nuke but we'll just start with her skill one. Her skill one, when you skill it up, it's a 60% chance to reduce the target's action gauge by 30%. Action gauge reduction is huge in this game, and like having a 60% chance to do it just with a basic attack is actually really, really nice. Skill two, it's only a single target, so unlike her sister, which she hits three, but it's a two turn sleep on I think 70% chance when you skill it up. Yeah, it's a four turn cooldown, but it's a two turn sleep. So great for TOA, great for PvP, you can just put someone to sleep for two turns on a four turn cooldown. And then her third skill is huge because it's a huge AoE that's only four turn cooldown, and it'll reduce the mobility of enemies hit for two turns with a 60% chance. That's, I mean, it's a pretty high chance, but if you hit like four people, you're probably going to at least reduce their mobility like three, maybe even all of them. Um, like I said, it's AoE, you can build her like with a ton of damage and just nuke them while reducing her, their mobility. You can like speed tune her to go right after her sister Cherry, where like Cherry will come in and defense break like their whole team, and then she'll come in and then reduce the mobility, or like switch it around and have her reduce mobility so they can't like move around, and then she'll come in for the defense break. Like she's really good with Cherry. And then she also, unlike her sister, she actually has a fourth skill, which is going to be a leader skill. When you max out the stats, it's going to be 25% defense, which is huge for a three-star unit having universal allies defense plus 25%. That's really, really good for her. So she's useful in like PvE and definitely PvP with like the nuke skill and the two-turn sleep. All right, so now next up, I am starting off with like the actually like farmable units, ones that you don't actually have to summon like as three stars. And so first up, we have Layla. Um, Layla, you, I think you get like early in the game or you get from one of the achievements like super early on. So like almost everyone should have her unless you fed her. So her first skill, it's going to be a 70% chance once you skill it up to increase the target's glancing hit rate for one turn and the skill's damage increases when you have greater max HP. So I'm, I'm just going to spoil this. She has two skills that you do more damage when you have more max HP. So just stacking her with like a ton of max HP, she'll actually do some really good damage with like high HP and like high crit rate, high crit damage. Um, what's funny is she's actually a priest, but she has pretty much no healing skill. 
Her skill two is gonna give, it's gonna be on a three turn cooldown when you max it out, give like a huge shield for 30, over 33%, I think it's 36% of their max HP for three turns. So it's like a three turn shield on a three turn cooldown. It removes a debuff. And then when you remove a debuff, this is her only healing ability as a priest. She grants re continuous recovery on two for two turns to each ally. So like on a three turn cooldown, giving a three turn long shield and a two turn long continuous recovery buff if you remove debuffs, that's actually really good for like just a three star unit. And then her third skill is the, the other one that scales off of her max HP. It's a large AOE that reduces mobility of enemies hit. So kind of like Flora, um, except it's a much higher accuracy slash resistance check. Um, and it, it, like I said, it also increases when you have greater max HP. This is actually, it could be a nuke if she's like tanky enough with like 5k HP, like 85% crit rate um, and like super high, like 200 plus crit damage. This is actually a super good damaging nuke along with her skill one. Um, like I said, you everyone gets her in the beginning, so hopefully you didn't feed her. Hopefully you saved her because she could be very useful down the road if you need like a pseudo damage dealer, priest support kind of thing. All right, so next up for the farmable three-star units, um, I'm gonna have Percival. You can actually get Percival from the Rift Dungeon. I think it's the fourth area. You just have to make sure you're on Conqueror and then you'll have a chance for the Rift to drop. Um, his skill one, it's gonna be a 40% chance. Actually, I think when you skill it up, it's a 60% chance. It's a three tile long, so one of the skill ups increases range right here. A three tile long, 60% chance to provoke enemies hit for one turn. So like you can potentially hit like their melee tank, you can hit like a midline like damage dealer and like a healer or like an archer all in one turn if you line them up correctly. Um, his second skill, it's gonna be you hit a target and push them forward along with you. So like both of you go back a tile if there's room and you have an 80% chance to increase your defense for two turns. The skill cooldown's only a two turn cooldown. So like the defense buff on yourself, if you get it will last until it's back up again. And the damage increases when you have greater HP. So super good. It's only single target, but like it's just like an all around great skill. It just busts his defense and then he does more damage the next time he does it because you'll still have the defense buff. And then his third skill is a huge nuke. I think it's it's only a three turn cooldown and it's a 60% chance to reduce mobility of all of the enemies in this area from like everyone around the enemy that you hit. And if you crit, it'll stun all of those enemies for one turn. And there's no like accuracy number here. So it's a super high chance to hit them. Um, and then his fourth skill is already a plus 25% defense. It's unlike, I think it was Flora. Flora, you actually have to skill it up. With him, all you gotta do is awaken him and he immediately gives everyone 25% increased defense, which also buffs the damage of this skill. So like he's a great tank and he provides super useful debuffs. Like provoking enemies, like provoking a healer, if you can like hit someone, like line yourself up and like hit the healer in the back to provoke them will stop them from healing. This skill is just going to increase your damage, and then this skill will like stun and reduce mobility of a ton of enemies. So like he's super super useful in PvP, and he can potentially be useful in TOA with just like the stun, like put him on Earthquake runes or something, and he'll like stun three people here and all that, but yeah, he's super super good unit for like free to play players. Alright, now last but certainly not least, I was actually debating about sharing this one on the spreadsheet in the video because I kind of wanted to keep her like under wraps because I want to build her up and like in secret because I think she's actually going to be really, really good for like PVE stuff and potentially even like some TOA stuff. So, and that unit's going to be Sophie. You can actually farm Sophie from the Rift Dungeon on I think stage two. Um, just make sure you're on Conqueror and you'll have a chance to drop her Rift. So Sophie skill one, it's a 60% chance to reduce, basically just defense break them. And it does more damage when the enemy hit has more active debuffs. So kind of similar to like the Lucifer, Thea, like Charlotte thing, just put a bunch of dots, even like defense break, attack break, or even like if you pair her with like Percival or any of like the Flora Cherry sisters who have like mobility down, speed reduction, all of that stuff, she's gonna not only defense break them, but do a ton of damage with her skill one. Her skill two is probably my favorite, one of my like, most favorite skills in the game. It's a 75% chance to stun the target for two turns. And if you stun them, you gain another turn. And this turn, that's only a three turn cooldown. So like run up to like the support or something, stun them with a 75% chance for two turns, gain another turn. 
And then this, like while they're stunned for two turns, this skill's only gonna be on a two turn cooldown because you got another turn from the successful stun. So then like, if you have more speed than them, right when it comes back up, they're still gonna be stunned or like their stun's just gonna finish and this is gonna be right back off of cooldown. So this skill is incredibly good. And then her third skill is kind of mediocre. It's just like a speed boost for two turns on a four turn cooldown to everyone around you. If this was like an action gauge increase as well, it'd be a lot better. Um, I probably wouldn't even use this. Like when I'm using her on manual, I'll probably only use these two skills. Um, and then her fourth skill is actually a leader skill. You increase all allies resistance by 28%, which is like great for PVP. Like you take her into like Guild Wars or something, you have plus 28% resistance, which is huge against like the sleep tower or like this the speed down tower or like basically any units that inflict debuffs on you so you give your team a lot of resistance and you bring like utility with defense break and more damage with this and like huge utility with stuns so definitely definitely build her if you have her um i think she's gonna be super great she's obviously no like claudia or something but keep in mind she's a farmable three star unit and you can get her skill ups like insanely easy i already have one like pretty much almost skilled up all the way already and that my friends is actually going to wrap it up for this video so make sure you guys do hit that thumbs up button because i super super appreciate it and like love all the support that you guys give me and please make sure that you are subscribed and hit that notification bell because I will be, even though I have them on the spreadsheet already, I will be making separate videos for the water and the fire, like free to play units. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for those. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I will check you all in the next video. See ya.